When people talk about exoplanets online today, most videos stick to the most famous ones. Planets like Kepler 22b, Janssen, Wasp 12b, HG 189733b, and many others you've probably heard of before. For some reason, these exoplanets are just talked about far more than any others. But there are over 5,600 known exoplanets, and there's a ton of incredibly interesting ones that don't get nearly as much attention as they deserve. Only talking about the most famous exoplanets not only gets repetitive and perpetuates misinformation, but doesn't accurately represent the true diversity of worlds we've discovered across the universe. So that's what I'm here to fix. This video will showcase five extremely underrated exoplanet systems I've found. I've never talked about any of these planets on my channel in depth before, and I've only seen them talked about very rarely. I'm also planning on making this into a series, so if you have any exoplanets you think are underrated, tell me in the comments and I'll probably cover them in later videos. This also won't be limited to just individual planets, as there are also entire underrated systems. And the first planet on this list is HD 80606b. I have seen a few videos online talking about this planet, but one of the first results you see when searching for HD 80606b on YouTube is a minute-long AI-generated video with 100 views, you can tell there's a problem especially because of how interesting this planet is. HD 80606b is a planet about four times the mass of Jupiter, but almost exactly the same size as Jupiter in radius. It takes about 111 days to orbit its star, and it's one of only two exoplanets where we have an idea as to how long its day is, the other one being Beta Pictoris b. There is a huge amount of uncertainty as to how long a day on this planet is, but it's probably between 58 and 178 hours long, or between 2 and 7 Earth days. But what truly sets HD 80606b apart isn't its rotation, it's the planet's orbit. HD 80606b gets as far away as 0.88 AU away from its star, a bit further than Venus orbits the Sun, but it also gets as close as 0.03 AU, over 10 times closer than Mercury orbits the Sun. This is not a normal orbit. This is the type of orbit we see with comets, not planets. To give a sense as to how extreme this orbit is, when HD 80606b reaches periastron, or the closest point to its star, temperatures go from a few hundred degrees to a few thousand in a matter of hours. It has one of the most eccentric orbits we've ever found, with an orbital eccentricity of 0.93. For comparison, an eccentricity of 0 is a perfect circle, and an eccentricity above 1 is not an orbit at all, and is the path an object takes when it's being ejected from a system. This, obviously, will significantly affect the environment of HD 80606b. Computer models of the planet show that as temperatures heat up this drastically, so-called shockwave storms engulf the entire planet at speeds of multiple miles per second, only for it to begin to rapidly cool down as it moves away from its star again, just to do it all over again a few months later. Here's a map of what that looks like. For reference, at the furthest point in its orbit, HD 80606b receives a similar amount of energy from its star Earth receives from the Sun. Then, at its closest approach, it receives 800 times more. This gives this planet some of the most extreme weather events ever observed on any planet. It's literally a planet-sized comet. In fact, it has an eccentricity comparable to Halley's Comet. To make things even crazier, this isn't even the only planet we know of that does this. HD 20782b has a similar orbit. But out of all the highly eccentric planets, we know the most about HD 80606b by far. We really have no idea how its orbit got to be like this, especially because it's bigger than every planet in the solar system combined. But of course, there are planets that get a lot bigger. Which brings us to the second planet of this list, Magor. Hat P2b, officially named Magor, is over double the mass of HD 80606b at 8.7 times the mass of Jupiter. It also has an orbital eccentricity of about 0.5, which is still pretty weird. It's also the only planet in this video with an actual name instead of a designation, Magor being the name of the ancestor of Hungarian people in various legends. Its star is also named Hunor, Magor's brother. They were both named in 2019. Anyways, Magor is nearly 9 times more massive than Jupiter, but only 10% larger than Jupiter in radius. Gas giants don't usually get much bigger than Jupiter in radius once you start increasing their mass. This is because the gravities of these planets pull down their atmospheres, decreasing the radius of the planet. This is why Jupiter and Saturn are pretty similar in radius, despite Jupiter being three times more massive than Saturn. It's also why almost all gas giants we know of are either smaller or similar to Jupiter in radius, despite being way bigger or smaller than Jupiter in mass. Though there are exceptions to this, namely temperature, which can increase the size of gas giants. This was seen with HD 80606b as well. Objects only really start increasing in radius after this point once you make them very hot or make them become stars. 
This is why Magor, despite being almost nine times Jupiter's mass, is pretty similar to Jupiter in radius. But Magor has several other things that makes it interesting. For one, because of its high mass, Magor has a surface gravity higher than the Sun. Of course, being a gas giant, it doesn't have a surface, but surface in this context just means the upper atmosphere. If you were able to stand on Magor, you would feel heavier than you would if you were standing on the surface of the Sun. Also because of the planet's relatively small radius, the atmosphere increases in density the deeper you go extremely quickly. Pressure builds up very fast because the atmosphere is so compact. And like HD 8606b, we have computer simulations showing how the atmosphere of Magor might change over time, as seen here. Other than its elliptical orbit and large size, Magor is a fairly typical hot Jupiter. It takes about 5 days to orbit its star, which is an F-type star a bit bigger than the Sun. There's also a second planet in the system, Hat B2C, which doesn't have an official name, but is even bigger than Magor at almost 11 Jupiter masses, but orbits much further out. Temperatures on Magor reach over 2,300 degrees Fahrenheit, or 1,260 Celsius. Both the planets in this video so far have been hot gas giants. We know of hundreds of those. Gas giants in close orbits of their stars are simply easier to see with most methods of planet detection, so we know of a lot of them. But this also means that smaller planets on long orbits are much harder to see. So we found a lot less cold, rocky planets like Earth or Mars. They're extremely difficult to detect, and so far we know of very few candidates. One of them being TRAPPIST-1H. You've almost certainly heard of TRAPPIST-1 before, to such an extent that it definitely doesn't fit the definition of underrated. But TRAPPIST-1H, the last planet of the system, is the least talked about. It's one of the smallest known planets, just 30% the mass of Earth and 70% of its radius. It takes just under 19 days to make a full orbit of its red dwarf star, which is so dim that despite being so close to it, TRAPPIST-1H is extremely cold. It has an estimated temperature of negative 101 degrees Celsius, or negative 150 Fahrenheit. Usually this wouldn't seem interesting to most, but cold rocky planets are extremely hard to find. They're small and far away from their stars, which is the worst combination of features a planet can have for us to detect. All methods of exoplanet detection are worse on slow, small, and cold planets, and cold rocky planets are all of those. So, TRAPPIST-1H is one of the very, very few cold rocky planets we know of. We don't know much about it, but it could be similar to a super Europa. Tidal forces from the other six large planets around it, and its nearby star, could cause it to be very geologically active, and potentially even have a subsurface ocean if it has water at all. Because of its small size, I wouldn't be surprised if it was airless, but then again, so is Europa, and that doesn't make it any less interesting. Luckily, TRAPPIST-1H, like the rest of its system, is perfect for study from James Webb, so we should hopefully know a lot more about the system and its cold rocky planets soon. The last two places on this list will be planetary systems, not individual planets. The first of these is L9859. L9859 is a red dwarf with four confirmed planets orbiting around it, with an additional unconfirmed planet. At face value, the system is pretty similar to the much more well-known TRAPPIST-1, with all the planets orbiting closely together, with the unconfirmed planet L9859F orbiting in the star's habitable zone. But unlike TRAPPIST-1, where all the planets are around one Earth mass, the sizes of the planets in the system are much more spread out. The smallest one, L9859b, is only 40% the mass of Earth, making it one of the smallest exoplanets we've found so far. And the biggest planet, L9859e, is over three times more massive than Earth. This means the planets of L9859 have the potential to be very different from one another, unlike TRAPPIST-1, where the similar masses of all the planets make the chances of them all being similar pretty high. And these planets have been studied by Hubble and other telescopes. There haven't been any definitive results on their environments yet as of the time I'm making this video, but some unconfirmed evidence for an atmosphere around L9859c, a 2 Earth mass planet, was found. L9859d, around 1.9 Earth masses, was found to have a low density, which could indicate that up to 30% of the planet's mass is made of water. It also had strong evidence for an atmosphere that has sulfur in it. Because it orbits too close to the star to have Earth-like temperatures, this could make L9859d a hot mini-Neptune. But this is just speculation, and other than the low density, no direct evidence for water has been found on L9859d. All in all, L9859 is a very underrated system, and surprisingly similar to TRAPPIST-1, but different in some very important ways. I'll be covering this system in greater detail in my upcoming video, A Grand Tour of L9859, so stay tuned for that. The next and last place on this list, K290, doesn't seem like anything particularly special at face value. 
It only has two confirmed planets, both too close to the star to be habitable, and having masses somewhere around 3 and 8 Earth masses respectively. Their star is a typical K-type star, with nothing particularly noteworthy about it. What sets K290 apart is its location. Assuming our current distance measurements are accurate, K290 is just under 80 light years away from the Pleiades star cluster. This makes it the closest planet to the Pleiades found so far. If you haven't heard of the Pleiades before, it's a young star cluster full of giant blue stars around 440 light years away from Earth that's surrounded by a nebula. You can see it without a telescope, making the Pleiades one of the most famous and recognizable things in the night sky. And that's when it's 440 light years away. K290 is only 80 light years away from it, assuming our distance measurements are accurate. The night skies of the two planets of K290 must be incredible. Of course, these aren't the only planets we've found near or even inside star clusters. The planet Amateru is inside the Hyades, and we found two planets inside the Beehive Cluster, and the planet PSR B1620 26b, unofficially named Methuselah, is inside the globular cluster Messier 4. But the Pleiades is the most famous of all star clusters, so I think it's cool that we found planets close to it. With that, those are five planets or planetary systems I think are underrated. However, there are hundreds of exoplanets just like these that are equally underrated that I chose not to cover here. This is because I'm going to turn underrated exoplanets into a series and cover the many, many underrated ones I didn't talk about here. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space and space colonization.